Uh, for Secretary Stoltenberg, what impact does NATO expect the Wagner events to have on the battlefield in Ukraine? And um, German Minister Pistorius, I was curious to ask, why did Germany change its decision about having permanent troops based in Lithuania? Was this at all tied to the Wagner events over the weekend, or was this in motion already before? Thank you. I think what we've seen in uh, Russia over the last days demonstrates the fragility of the German regime. And of course it is German. a demonstration of weakness the when, German regime? when there are... <laughs> sorry? Not the German regime. No, sorry, the Russian. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, they are uh, quite so, stable so, at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, we see the, the weakness of the, of the Russian regime and, and it also demonstrates how, uh, how uh, difficult and dangerous it is for uh, President Putin to be reliant on mercenaries. That has actually turned against him. And uh, it also demonstrates that uh, uh, it is hard to predict exactly what will now happen in the next days and weeks. But uh, we should not make the mistakes that we are underestimating uh, the Russians. So uh, we need to continue to provide support to Ukraine. And that's exactly what NATO and NATO allies are doing uh, with um, uh, military support, but also support for the uh, long uh, term. Uh, and um, that's, in a way, uh, what we can say today about the effects uh, on the battlefield uh, in uh, Ukraine. Does NATO need to react in any way on the recent developments in Russia? Uh, President Nauseda, for example, suggested uh, yesterday to strengthen the eastern flank of NATO right now if the Wagner troops uh, will settle in Belarus. Is that an option from your point of view, or are there any consequences for the NATO-Russia founding act? Um, and my second question to you would be, um, what message uh, goes out from the permanent deployment of the German Brigade that was announced by Minister Pistorius today? What message goes out to uh, Mr. Putin and Mr. Lukashenko from that deployment? Um, and uh, Mr. Nauseda, a question on the Brigade 2. Um, uh, the, uh, the condition is that Lithuania um, builds the infrastructure for the Brigade. Um, by when will that be finished? Let me start by saying that we, uh, of course, uh, very much welcome the German leadership, uh, which has been uh, demonstrated uh, uh, throughout actually a long time, but it's uh, very much uh, uh, enhanced by the German uh, announcement uh, today, uh, because uh, a German-led battle group, but also more German uh, troops uh, deployed here, uh, shows a strong German commitment to our collective defense uh, to our shared security, and it's part of uh, the adaptation of NATO which has taken place since 2014 uh, with high readiness of forces, but also with more uh, deployments of uh, combat ready NATO troops uh, in the eastern part of the lines, including uh, the battle groups, and one of them is the German led uh, battle group here in uh, Lithuania. So, this demonstrates German leadership, uh, German uh, commitment to our transatlantic bond. And it also demonstrates the value of uh, a multilateral NATO commitment to a country like, uh, like Li Lithuania. It sends, of course, a message, uh, our presence here, and also the exercise we just uh, watched, of a NATO readiness and a NATO capability to defend every inch of uh, NATO territory. And the reason we do that is, of course, not to provoke a conflict, but it is to prevent the conflict, because credible deterrence uh, it's about preventing uh, war, it's about preventing conflict, it's about preventing an attack and preserving uh, peace. And this is not only about forward presence, which is important, but it's also about uh, um, uh, pre-positioned equipment supplies, uh, high readiness and exercises. So it's all of this together, uh, backed also by significant air and naval uh, power. And that also fits into the issue of air defense. I think, uh, of course, land-based air defense systems are important, but we have to understand that uh, when we now have uh, this rotational model in place for air defense, uh, where, which can make it easier for us to switch from air policing to air defense, air forces is also part of air defense, and naval forces can also uh, provide uh, significant air defense capabilities on very short uh, notice. So uh, uh, this is uh, the German announcement. Is, um, is welcomed and, uh, and, uh, and it's part of a pattern, a uh, big adaptation of NATO uh, that have taken place over several uh, years. 
One more thing about this is that we will also make important decisions at the uh, uh, Vilnius in Summit uh, on, uh, on uh, the new force structure, the new uh, force model, and also uh, uh, with plans that will dedicate specific forces to protect specific territories. This is the first time since actually the Cold War where, where we are going to have uh, plans uh, linked to specific forces to protect specific uh, territories. Uh, then the first question was on... Um, yeah, well, so first of all, I think it's a bit uh, early to say exactly, uh, because uh, uh, things may still uh, evolve. Uh, second, we are, of course, monitoring very closely, and, uh, and we are able to react quickly if there is a need. At the same time, I think it is important uh, to remind uh, you all that this is about internal Russian matters. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and therefore what NATO is focused on is to support Ukraine. Uh, it demonstrates the fragility of the, uh, the, 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 the Russian regime, uh, but it's not for NATO to in, in, intervene in those uh, uh, issues. That's a, a Russian matter. What matters for NATO is to not be intimidated, not be uh, uh, prevented from uh, continuing to provide unprecedented support for Ukraine, and also, of course, to have the necessary deterrence and defense. We have that already. We have increased our presence over the years, and with the German announcement, we have yet another example of how allies are increasing their presence. But again, it's not only about presence, it's also about the ability to have early warnings, indications, and then react quickly if there is a need, and this exercise demonstrates exactly that. Uh, let's speak to uh, Nick Robertson, who's having to j juggle all of this, and it's so fast moving. And you can see there when Stoltenberg is speaking, the sensitivities here, because they regard it as an internal Russian matter, but they do feel, obviously, they have to monitor what happens in terms of how it might affect Ukraine. And that, that was one of the questions that, that was asked. And I think his point was, in particular, don't underestimate Russia. That's the key thing. We need to keep supporting Ukraine. And the, and the questions were involved, will Prigozhin, uh, essentially in Belarus, pose a bigger threat to NATO? Because will he bring his forces there? These, these are unknowns, although that seems very unlikely. Um, what's interesting here is this disposition, new disp NATO disposition of additional air assets on the eastern flank. And I was recently covering the big NATO air defender exercise where it was all about training uh, different pilots from different countries together. But the commander, the German commander in charge of that, said one of the big takeaways from watching the way Russia fights the war in Ukraine is control of airspace. And what you heard Secretary General uh, Stoltenberg speak about there was the importance of, again, being able to control that airspace. It's clear that NATO sees the way that the war is being fought in Ukraine and is stepping up its ability to deal with an overspill, the way that Russia's fighting it, with missiles, with drones. That's what these fighter aircraft could this turn from policing to defense of NATO would find themselves doing. But yes, in the context of the, the Wagner situation over the weekend, uh, I don't think NATO or anyone else has taken their eye off the ball. But the diplomatic message from uh, Stoltenberg, the same as we've heard from the State Department and from other, others, this shows the fragility of the Russian leadership but don't think that it's going to change anything on the ground immediately in Ukraine. Um, we've got, had some video from Putin today. We've had some video of the defence minister out there on the front lines as well. We don't know when either of them were filmed, but this is how they're messaging right now, isn't it, that we are still in control. And, you know, in terms of the defence minister, very interesting, because that's the guy that Prigozhin wanted to get rid of. But they're saying he's here. Almost saying he's still here. Uh, they're not saying that how long is going to be around for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, this is the Kremlin messaging saying um, nothing to see here, folks. Move on. Um, lifting the security uh, restrictions in Moscow, which, which was severe. There was going to be no going to work on Monday and there were going to be no public events until the beginning of July. So all of that's gone. Um, uh, it's the Kremlin is taking the attitude of, it appears, least said, let's move on. Um, 
partly because, look, what Prigozhin did here was, get, was show that there is a big public support for how people feel that the war is being badly fought, that, you know, this has been a big part of Prigozhin's narrative. Uh, and he got a lot of support on the street. And that's a very dangerous, has been a very dangerous conversation for Putin to allow to grow in the country. So that's one, one reason why Putin wants to pretend everything's OK and move along and just refocus on the fight. And the other is, of course, that there's this huge turmoil going on behind the scenes uh, within Putin's own inner circle. And he hasn't handled it as well or as strongly as he has in the past. He's allowed it to come on the streets and jeopardize the safety of the Russian citizens. And if there is one thing that the Russian citizens uh, sort of understand in their relationship with Putin is, you can lie and cheat to us as much as you like, but just give us security and safety and stability in our own country. His tenure as leader, um, becomes more fragile in this new environment. Mm. Uh, so, absolutely, the Kremlin's trying to portray, whenever this video of Putin was shot, is trying to portray, I oh, know, folks, you know, we're moving on. Mm. No, that's all mm. done. Okay. Uh, Nick, thank you very much indeed.